Hey, our guest in this segment, Tim Garino, pastor of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission downtown Martinsburg, who shipped off to uh, Ukraine, as he had uh, done at the shortly after the beginning of this senseless war, uh, Putin's war on the innocent people of Ukraine. And he joins us now via telephone from an undisclosed location. Tim, good morning. Thanks so much for calling in. Do we, do we lose Tim? Yeah, we did. I see that. I, I see the uh, sound meter on his phone line is gone. So maybe the connection he's going to try to reestablish it. I see him calling back in again right now. So we'll have Tim back uh, just a, a mere moment from now, I guess. Yeah, Colin just grabbed the line. So Tim, uh, I guess uh, over the weekend, last week and, and such, uh, took off uh, for the Ukraine on a mission, he was uh, building a home there. Last time I checked with him, then moving on to another location. Tim, do we have you now? Are you there? Yes. There we go. I hear you nice and clearly. Are Are you okay? Al- I'm, I'm having a hard time because where I'm at. But hey, we've been real busy. Uh, got real busy in Moldova. Been going crazy. Very little sleep. We're in Ukraine. Been in Ukraine. I, I forget what day I got here. Today's Thursday. I think I got here. And I can't even remember. It's been, it's been, a, but we've been all over. Uh, a couple nights ago, we were up where they uh, on March 22nd, where they hit the dam and they hit the town there. I can't say the name. They leveled homes. Uh, constant air raids, constant bombing while we were there. Uh, Mikolai last, well, Mikolai the night, the night before Odessa. We've been in the last 30 some hours. It's been uh, rocketing. All kinds of wonderful stuff on the way into Odessa. We had to pick up a bunch of special packages and take them in. Um, had a chance to put some air, uh, water filters in some places. It's been pretty busy. We're on the road right now. Uh, standing on the side of the road. i got to get going here soon. But been uh, very busy. Uh, able to share the gospel with a lot of people. Spent a lot of time praying with people and sharing the word and getting food aid out. Getting a whole bunch of stuff going. Um, this weekend or next week sometime, we're going to be going out, as the pastor put it. Better bring your adult diapers. We're going to go into some pretty bad places. Um, uh, today we're down at the Black Sea. I think you sent me a picture. Um, down there it's all mined, and uh, they got the beaches closed off because the mines washed ashore during the, the bad storms. And I uh, showed you a picture of... Uh, Little boy in a stroller when they hit the other when the rockets hit the other night where we were at. Um, that little boy hasn't spoke since. They're going through trauma. They got a doctor. I can't hear you that well, but I hope you can hear what I'm saying. And uh, appreciate your support. Appreciate everything. When I called you the other day, um, we were at the site where they wiped out the houses when they hit rockets real bad there just left Odessa where they hit the, where they killed all those people the other night. About three weeks ago, 20 some people were killed, six kids. Um, it's pretty busy here. And I'll stop for a second if I, if you, I got a question. Sure. Tim, can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you real good. Excellent. Uh, how close have you been to the bombing? Oh, probably closer. <laughs> closer than I want to be. <laughs> Yeah, we we hear noise in the background. Is any of that uh, shelling? No, not at the moment. It's uh, mostly uh, I'm, I'm like towards the ocean front, so we're getting we're leaving Odessa. Uh, we're heading to another place now. Tim, what what is the attitude of the Ukrainian people at this time in regards to the United States funding for this uh, war in our country has uh, pretty much dried up. It, it has been uh, political become a political football. How are they doing there in regards to ammunition and such? And what are their thoughts on America right now? Well, the Ukrainian people are strong. And they're, uh, I, I mean, I, I'll tell you, uh, the spirit is overwhelming. I, I don't, the po- pol- politics part, we don't get into. They thank God for every American they see here and, and the help they're getting. Uh, they love America. Anytime I talk to any of them, never say anything negative. Uh, just, uh, Strong, strong people willing to uh, stick it out. There's a lot going on here. I can't say over the phone uh, that I've seen. Um, it's amazing what's happening. 
uh, what's not being reported. It's amazing uh, to be able to say a lot more when I'm in person back home. Don't want to get in trouble or get anybody in trouble at the moment. Uh, but it, it, it's good spirit, strong spirit. Um, great stuff here. People are in good, good, good mindset. Um, it's been a blessed message. The gentleman um, that's taking me around, a lot of insight. Get to get to see a lot of things that uh, you wouldn't normally get to see otherwise or hear about. John Gilstrap. I'm got, I, yeah, they're flagging me down now. I got to get going, and I appreciate you giving me this time. And I'll try to keep up. Uh, give you another call sometime next week. Um, but I got to get rolling. But I appreciate it, and uh, just. Uh, Keep your prayers coming, and uh, thanks for your support, Rob, and, and, and you guys there in the station and the people listening, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Jim. Stay safe. All right. Take care, man. Take care, Tim. God bless. Sorry we couldn't get in additional questions with Tim. As he said, they're flagging him down, and he had to move on. That was Pastor Tim Garino from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission from Ukraine. This is his second trip there, and uh, the first time he came back with some – uh, terrifying stories of what it was like there toward the beginning of the war. And I have been getting communication from Tim. Got a call yesterday, some emails and texts and such. Uh, he had sent us some photos, too. But uh, for whatever reason, there has been a Wi-Fi issue in our area. And as a result of that, we haven't been able to uh, get that stuff transmitted to be able to put it up on our uh, television screen and our Facebook screen. Our apologies. Not sure what that issue is, but whatever it is, it picked a bad day to be it um so anyway any any thoughts on what you just heard from tim there john it just occurs to me the the horrors of what these people in ukraine have been going through it's you you go from one day of being this this beautiful i've seen pictures i've never been there but this it's it's a gorgeous country and then overnight for purely political purposes, it becomes a war zone, and then it double and triple down on a war zone, then it becomes a political battlefield. And you look at the devastation that's left behind after, what, two years of war, two and a half years of, yeah. of warfare, and now people are just trying to survive. And, and to hear Tim talk about them having a strong spirit, and and I, I don't I don't know what you you get to that point you wake up today after suffering yesterday and are you are you just living to survive till tomorrow or what do you what are the goals for just getting through the day is it more than just survival it's hard to fathom that level of of deprivation and and shock it's 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 really hard to wrap my head around what those people are going through and it's and it's instantaneous you went from having a very normal life one day to the next day, maybe your husband's dead, your brother's dead, your father's dead, uh, because a lot of Ukrainian men signed up for the army. And, Non-soldiers and became soldiers. Yes. Yeah. And now your family shattered and your your country's at the brink. So, Mr. Harvey? Uh, <clears throat> just, it, it was really good to hear from Pastor Tim, to hear his voice. And I think, to me, that's what struck me the most is his voice, the tone, and the hope is the same as if he's sitting here in the studio. And he's not in a studio. He's in a war zone and close to the front lines and is experiencing the the evil of evils, the mass deaths of many. And he's just he, – and there he stands. He's, he's a true spiritual leader to a lot of a lot of people, and he should be. And he, I think he's just a – I'm just humbled by his, his strength and his fortitude to, to – it makes me feel better to hear him there. Mm -hmm. I, and, I don't, and I don't mean that to be cheeky or anything like no, that, but it's you. just like there's good people that can still stand in the face of evil. I wish I was that strong. Well, I think that's well stated. Uh, he came back last time, and there were some stories that he, he told me he wouldn't even put on the air in terms of the things that have been going on over there as uh, uh, perpetrated by the Russians and their soldiers in these communities. And... To this point, as far as I know, they haven't been told on the air. And I, I won't break that confidence, but the things that he relayed are just stories that if if you were hearing these things for the first time, uh, you would be in disbelief that people would do these things to each other. 
They do, and they, they and, and some of these people are related. You know, Ukrainians and Russians are. There's a lot of blood tie there. It. I wonder if that makes it worse. It does. It would have to. I, I mean, like the 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 anger, not the mm-hmm. fact that it happened. It's like you're betrayed by your own. If that increases the level of of malice towards each other, like you can expect it from a, a distant enemy. Sure. But when it's one of your own that's attacking you, then you know compounds. Well, and that, and it, and that's compound by excuse me, compounded by so many different layers of perceived betrayal. Um, the the war started with the expectation of Ukraine folding right away. Right, this was the the war was going to last for a couple of days. We offered Zelensky asylum in the United States. He said, "I don't want to ride. I I don't need a ride. I need ampu- uh, uh, ammunition." And he fought back. Became, uh, I think, quite the inspiring uh, war personality, wartime personality. And now, and and then all all of this money and materiel flowed to him from the United States. And from uh, other parts from around the world, and never quite enough to seal the deal, right? Enough to keep the war flowing, never really enough to defeat the enemy. And then the political seasons change in the United States, and the United States starts decides to pull back on for various political reasons. And the consequence is real human beings, real men, women, children, property suffering um the the mixed message and you talk about the betrayal it, yes it's 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 people who are related by blood and by ancestry but there's also promises made and promises broken and promises implied and it's i it's so infuriating to me and i'm not involved with it mm-hmm. you know to to be in the center of all of that and and all that's involved in this is their whole futures you know everything that they will ever be is is what's on the line here um i i I don't know how they cope i just don't know how they cope i'm in the business of imagining things and this is just kind of beyond my ability to do that just got a text from pastor tim and he was uh, thanking us for the time and sorry he had to get out uh, the sirens were going off so the warnings i assume that means shelling coming uh, his way so they had to move from that location and get to a safer place and he still feels obligated to text to apologize isn't that amazing (laughs) yeah yeah i don't don't, he's he's great amazing amazing fellow but but much easier to stay safe here in the united states right Sure, do, and, and, do your work and, in the streets. Well, yeah, which he wasn't wasn't like he was doing nothing. While, Correct. When he's back home, are he, you? Did he have a focused mission going over there? Did was he going to do a specific thing? Yeah, or, there, there were three or four things I think that were on his list of things they needed to do. One of those was they were going to be building a home for a family, and then the other one was to go and minister to some of the troops on the front lines. Uh, Tim told the story before he left. I'm not sure if this was on the air or off the air, but it's shareable either way. In that, uh, in his previous trip, uh, he was moving toward the front lines to minister to these soldiers, bring them relief, aid, and such. And there were some uh, journalists that had uh, also wanted to go <clears throat> to get uh, some stories, but they would they stopped at a certain point where it was like, "Don't cross this line because we're not guaranteeing your safety after this line." Tim's group was going past that line. They were literally going up to the front line, and that's what he was doing there last time. And I'm, I'm assuming he's because that they just had to evacuate where they were, that they are doing the same thing this time, too. And this is essentially trench warfare at this point in, in right. a lot, lot of respects, right? They're yeah. just kind of dug in inch by inch. It, it goes to, uh, the whole Ukraine objective by... Putin, he had stated previously the greatest tragedy of his lifetime was the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and it was his goal to reinstate it, to reunite it, to put those countries back uh, together again and, and form, reform the Soviet Union in some form or fashion. And I think the Ukraine is just another step in that plan. And you get there, now you're right up against Poland, and now you're dealing with the NATO country. And this is the guy that 
I, I, he's got nothing to lose, right? And he's 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 formed an axis of of evil around him, what's supporting him right now, and in delivering the ammunition to his his troops, the, that which he can't fully provide. And you look at this: is 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 the Ukraine the, the tipping point? If you give this up, does this really start the next domino? I. Th- I think we've sent really mixed messages to Putin, who I think is a madman. Uh, we gave him Georgia. We didn't care about that. Crimea. And Crimea. So Ukraine, he didn't really have reason to suspect a lot of pushback on Ukraine. So, But there is pushback on Ukraine. Being a NATO country is a big deal. I don't think, I, I don't think the threat to Poland is, is, the, is the true threat that, people pretend it is lithuania um if I, I i don't know if lithuania is is part of nato or not it is is it that no if, if it's a if it's a nato signatory i think it's safe from putin for the foreseeable future just because nobody wants nobody wants that war uh, although you know if if the perception of weakness in washington is such that we um people don't believe that the strength of the nato um uh, uh treaty would be uh, responded to, well, we'll see. We're letting China take over a lot of, <laughs> claim a lot of ocean as, as their own without, without pushback. So it, it's, power is about strength and strength is about power. And if we're projecting weakness, we'll see. But these are scary times. But I don't think, I don't, if, if, if Ukraine falls, if, and sometimes capitulation is the only way to stop the bleeding. And I don't, I'm not smart enough to know that that's the way to go. Uh, but if it does fall, I don't. I don't think that Poland Poland is necessarily next. But do you think that Ukraine's the end? Mm, I, I I don't know. I don't know. Well, but I, do, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we can sacrifice hundreds of thousands of we Americans can sacrifice hundreds of thousands more Ukrainian lives because we fear the future of NATO. I don't think that's fair. Well, it's, it's really whether the Ukrainians want to. Because this is well, the Ukrainians want to fight for. to the last person. That's yes. that's certainly up to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if we're stopping them from capitulating to to stop their own bleeding, because we're afraid of what might happen, I don't think that's right. What happens next with Putin after he's well, gone? He's not. He's not as. Am I writing? Am he, I writing this 70, book? I, I can tell you what happens. He's seventy-one. To Putin. Seventy-one. So it's it, you know. It could be any time, right? I mean, I, I'm not saying that's old, but it's not. There's there's a ending coming within the next dec- at least decade. Or he two. needs a 150 grain headache. Okay, I get that. That's a <laughs> that's a reference to a yeah, bullet. Yeah, um, you probably didn't have to say that out loud. <laughs> well, he's the social assassin. Now there he's a. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, before we get. And I say kicking down our door. Um, Twenty seconds. Wrap it up. No, I was just what, what? Who takes over? And what? What's their plans? And is that person even worse? I, I, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's the things that I, that really I think about a lot too.